Hi, I'm Andrew Molo, CPA and QuickBooks Pro Advisor. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your QuickBooks Online for restaurant business. Okay, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the QuickBooks Online Plus. But if you only need a maximum of three users, you can also use the QuickBooks Essentials because it's a lot cheaper. And also, we are not going to track inventories in QuickBooks for restaurant businesses. And I'm going to explain to you why later in the video. So for now, let's click on uh, QuickBooks Online Plus free 30-day trial. <clears throat> if you don't have a QuickBooks account, you can register here. Uh, if you already have one, <coughs> you can click on sign in. Then continue to trial. Okay, so the name of our business will be The Cabin. It's a restaurant and it's also a sole proprietorship. Uh, <clears throat> how long have you been in business let's say one year and then what would you describe what your business does so this is asking for the industry or the business type so we will choose accommodation and food services let's hit next and then <clears throat> we will be sending and tracking invoices we, we should organize our expenses as well we will trace our sales taxes uh, okay, let's just click all of this just in case something comes up. Then we click on all set. Okay, now we're done with the initial setup. Let's move to the next step. Okay, so the next thing we will do is to work on our account and settings. So let's go ahead and click on this gear icon and choose account and settings. Okay, so there are five tabs in here. I'll try to walk you through each of them very quickly because I'm trying to uh, keep this video as short as possible. So first is company. Uh, in this tab, it's all about company information. So the first field will be company name. So this is where you put uh, the company name that you want to appear on your external documents such as sales forms, purchase orders, uh, invoices, etc. So I want that to be the cabin restaurant. So, <clears throat> next is legal name. So, if you're using a name that is different to what is actually registered with the government, uh, you can just uncheck this box and put the name in here. Otherwise, you just have to leave the box checked. Okay, so business ID. Uh, let's put five. Then we'll hit save. Next is company type. So again, this is a sole proprietorship, but you can change that if you want. And then the industry would be accommodation and food services. Then let's hit save. Okay, next is contact information. So let's put our company email address in here. And if you want to use a different email address uh, for communications with customers, you can also uncheck this box, put the email address here. Otherwise, you just have to leave the box checked okay so next is company phone number you can put it here and you can also put your website if you have one and then you hit save okay next is our address so this is where we put our company address and it's also asking for a customer facing address if it's the same with your company address you can leave the, the box checked otherwise you can check this box and put the information in here it goes the same with your legal address okay so let's put our company address here let's say Bellona Avenue Baltimore let's see then we hit save okay next up billing and subscriptions so this is where you can downgrade your plan or if you're on trial period like this one and you decided you want to get the subscriptions you just go here and click subscribe Okay, so next is sales. The first field you'll see is where you can customize the aesthetics of your uh, external documents. The next field you'll see is the contents of your sales form. So for the first item, I'll choose net 30 and then send later. 
uh, I'm gonna switch this on if you want to make custom fields you can also do that you can also decide whether to display that internally or in public I'm just gonna leave this blank for a while yes I'm gonna use custom transaction numbers uh, service date is not really applicable to us but we can make use of discounts and deposits and then we'll hit save okay next is products and services so when we create an invoice we are going to charge that to a service item that is linked directly to a general ledger account i'm going to show you how to do that later in the video so let's switch this on this one pops out i'm going to talk about SKUs and inventory tracking feature of quickbooks online probably in a different video so for the meantime let's just leave this as is and hit save so the rest of this uh, fields are either unnecessary or optional. So let's move to the next tab, which is expenses Okay, so first field is bills and expenses first item Show items table on expense and purchase forms So when we switch this on what it does is instead of just charging purchases directly to GL accounts You can now charge that to products. So in this case, we're going to use non inventory items So let's switch this on and I'm going to leave the rest of this as is. Let's hit save. Okay, so next is purchase orders. If you want to use purchase orders, you can also switch this on and hit save. And you can also, if you want to use uh, custom email messages along with the purchase orders, you can also do that. But I'm going to leave this as is for the meantime. So next is advanced. Okay, I'm not gonna go through each of this because I'm trying to limit my time. I'm just gonna go with the crucial one. So let's start with accounting. First month of fiscal year, let's say January. First month of the taxable year, let's choose this one. Accounting method, we will be choosing between accrual and cash basis. I prefer accrual. Uh, if there are multiple users in these books and you wanna make sure that at the end of a certain period, the books are finalized and closed, you can also switch this on and choose your closing date. Uh, in this case, I'll choose December 31. And then you can either allow changes after viewing if you want to make changes uh, after the closing date or allow changes after viewing a warning and entering a password. So I'm going to choose the second one and let's put the password cabin. And then let's hit save. Next is company type, uh, sole proprietorship. That's good. Let's hit save. Chart of accounts, uh, enable account numbers. And there's a reason why most accountants use account codes for their chart of accounts because it's easier to maneuver when you are doing business analysis. So let's switch this on, show account numbers. And let's just leave these two as is. We can change that after we set up our chart of accounts. Let's hit save. Categories. So if you need to categorize your transactions further into special classes, you can also switch this on. Or if you have multiple branches, outlets, uh, warehouses, and stuff like that, you can also track locations by switching this on. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave this as is. Next is currency. So for our home currency, let's choose uh, United States dollar. And if you're operating under multiple currencies, you can also switch this on. But if you do that, there is no switching it back. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave that as is. Then let's hit save. Last but not the least, other preferences uh, for our date format. I'm fine with this number format. This is okay. Warn if duplicate check number is used, yes. Warn if duplicate bill number is used, yes. Warn if duplicate journal number is used, yes. Sign me out if inactive for, let's set this to three hours. And then let's hit save. Okay, so now we're done with our account and settings. Let's move to the next step. Chart of accounts, a set of general ledgers that's gonna build up our financial reports. 
So it's very important that we get to know the business first before making this because it differs from one business to another. So out of the box, QuickBooks already designed a chart of accounts for you, but we are going to customize it. So there are two ways we can easily customize our chart of accounts. First is by uh, modifying the existing chart of accounts. Second is by deactivating the existing ones and importing a new one. So for this tutorial, we will go with the second option. Okay, let's close account and settings. On the left navigation pane, go to accounting and choose chart of accounts. There will be some accounts that cannot be deactivated because they are linked to products and services and for some other reasons. But we are going to deactivate as many accounts as possible. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, all you have to do is click on this arrow right here and choose make inactive. Then hit yes. Okay, so I'm going to do the same uh, to the rest of the GL accounts and I'm gonna get back to you in a bit okay done with deactivating GL accounts so these are the remaining accounts that cannot be deactivated so if you noticed we still have sales account and retained earnings account which means we're gonna have to exclude this from our importation just to avoid duplicate accounts okay so the next thing we're gonna do is organize a chart of accounts for importation now when you organize a chart of account it's always better to follow the liquidity principle liquidity basically means the ability of a property to be converted into cash so we always start with the most liquid assets down to the least liquid assets okay so this is the chart of accounts I organized we have four columns number name type and detail type so in case you are migrating balances into QuickBooks, you can also make an additional column in here for the migrating balances or the ending balances uh, from your previous accounting software. So let's start with cash and bank accounts. Uh, we have three bank accounts, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, followed by our accounts, receivable accounts, and then inventory accounts. So if you're wondering why we are maintaining uh, inventory accounts in this set despite the fact that I've said we are not going to track inventories in QuickBooks for restaurant businesses uh, for practicality purpose so we are maintaining these accounts only for the purpose of our month-end adjustment to cost of sale so for those of you who are not familiar with this concept um, at the end of the month restaurants normally conduct a physical count so they go to the stores they count whatever is left in the store, the produce, uh, the supplies, etc. And then the values of those inventories, of those ending inventories, will be used to deduct from the balance of cost of sales. So the entry will be credit to cost of sales and then debit to these inventory accounts. But uh, on the next month, this specific entry will be reversed so that in effect, the balances of these inventory accounts will always be zero. In short, we are only using these inventory accounts so that we will be able to present the correct balance of cost of sales. Okay, so next is fixed asset account. We have one fixed asset account for vehicle along with its accumulated depreciation account, followed by accounts payable trade, credit cards, short-term loans, sales taxes, non-current liabilities, mortgage payable, bonds payable, and long-term loans. So next is our sales account. So for the main account, uh, we have sales, 1600, and then followed by uh, 1661, 1662, and 1663. All of these will be sub-accounts for 1600 sales. So However, we already have this inside QuickBooks, so we are going to exclude this from importation. So we have, we have our sub-accounts, sales for dine-in customers. We also have sales for take-out customers and other income. Next is cost of sales. So for our cost of sales, we also have main account of 1700 cost of sales. And then followed by 1761, 1762, 1763, and 64. All of this will be sub-accounts for 
uh, our main account which is 1700 cost of sales so we have cost of sales for ingredients condiments garnish and packaging so next is ex uh, administrative expenses uh, we have rent expense marketing salaries uh, income tax expense and then depreciation for other expense loss on spoilage and waste and then bank charges miscellaneous expenses and finally owner's equity and capital drawing so i'm gonna leave a link to this file on the description down below so you can modify this however you want so we are now ready to import this chart of accounts okay so let's go back to quickbooks and then go to this green button right here that says new and then you click on the arrow beside it and then click import and then find your import file then hit next then the next step would be to map uh, the column headers in your excel file uh, with the column headers in quickbooks so this one is good then we hit next so if there are errors uh, along the importation process you will immediately know because uh, some of the boxes in this page will turn red so so far there are no errors but we have to exclude two accounts first is our sales account let's find our sales account it's this one we will exclude this and then the second one is our retained earnings account uh, so I think it's already excluded so I think we're good and then last step is to click on import Okay, so 37 of 37 accounts are successfully imported. Okay, next step, we are going to assign sub-accounts for our sales and cost of sales accounts. So first, let's deal with our sales account. So since we have already excluded our main account for sales uh, from the importation file, we will be using the default uh, sales account from QuickBooks. So let's find the sales account it's this one and then we click on this arrow and hit edit okay so let's rename this to sales uh, revenue then the number would be one six hundred okay so let's hit save and close okay so let's go to our sales accounts Okay, so it's this one so uh, let's go to 1661 click on this arrow click on edit and then click on this box then choose 1600 as the main account it's this one okay so let's click on save and close and then we'll do the same process uh, with the rest of the sales accounts. Okay, 1662, click on edit. Click on this box, choose 1600 and save and close. Next, 1663, other income. So let's click on edit, click this box choose 1600 and save and close all right let's move to our cost of sales accounts so our main account would be 1700 cost of sales the rest would be sub accounts for 1700 cost of sales okay so let's start with 1761 click on this arrow click on edit click on this box then choose 1700 cost of sales and hit save and close okay so next is 1762 then edit then click on this box then choose 1700 cost of sales next is 1763 cost of sales garnish Click on edit, click on this box, 
then click on custom sales and then last is custom sales packaging 1764 click on this arrow hit on edit click on this box and then choose 1700 custom sales now we're done with our chart of accounts let's move to the next step okay so products and services so as far as products is concerned we will only be using non-inventory items which means products that we purchase or we sell but we cannot track uh, quantity movements due to practicality reasons so these are items that we immediately charge to expense accounts such as custom sales every time we purchase them and at the end of the month we adjust the balance of custom sales uh, through uh, physical accounts okay so this is the non-inventory item list i made uh, we have three columns first is product name and then type and expense account so basically what we're doing here is we are linking each of these uh, items uh, to specific custom sales accounts so if you remember we have four custom sales accounts ingredients condiments garnish and packaging so we will be categorizing all of this into the appropriate custom sales account okay so let's start with custom sales ingredients we have uh, chicken pork fish oxtail beef lamb celery cabbage carrots potato banana rice flour and chili peppers so every time we purchase any of these items it will automatically be debited to custom sales ingredients okay so next is condiments so we have ketchup hot sauce soy sauce black pepper olive olive oil cooking wine and coconut vinegar so every time we purchase any of these items it will be debited to custom sales condiments next is garnish we have cherry and balsamic vinegar all of this will be debited to custom sales garnish and finally custom sales packaging so we have an item called takeout food box it's also a non-inventory item and every time we purchase that it will be debited to custom sales packaging on a side note since these are perishable items we need to implement the first in first out system uh, both in the consumption aspect and in the costing method which means the uh, the cost of our ending inventories should also be the cost of the latest purchased item so what i mean by this is in order to be able to evaluate the correct cost of our ending inventories we need to have a report that shows the quantity of the items purchased the unit of measure and the price unfortunately unlike quickbooks desktop uh, quickbooks online does not have the unit of measure uh, feature just yet so we need to rely strictly on descriptions okay so now we're ready to import this let's go back to quickbooks okay so on the left navigation pane let's go to sales and click on products and services so uh, if you can see this link at the bottom that says import a file this is what we're gonna click but if you want to create product and services manually you can also click this uh, green button so we click on this one then we find our import file it's this one then click on next then uh, we will map our Excel fields with our QuickBooks online fields so this one is good let's hit next and now we're seeing some errors uh, in some fields but we'll try to look at, we'll try to check if these are really errors so I'm gonna check I'm gonna click on one of these if the highlight disappears then it means it's not really an error okay so I'm gonna click on this yep it's not an error so I'm just gonna click on all of this and I would assume that it's the same issue with the expense account column so I'm gonna click on one of this 
yes, it's not really an error. It's like confirming the content of the box. So I'm just gonna click on all of this. Okay, so now we're good. Uh, all we need to do is click on import. Twenty-four out of twenty-four products and services successfully imported. Okay, next is services. Restaurant businesses do not sell products. We primarily sell services. And the details of these services would be the name of the dish, the variants, and the combinations, which will be shown on the sales reports generated by the POS systems that restaurants use. Okay, so for accounting purposes, we will only be using two services, which is namely takeout and dine-in services. Okay, so let's create our service items. On the left navigation pane, you go to sales and click on products and services. On your upper right corner, there is a green button that says new. We click on that. And then we choose service. And then we name this service uh, dine-in services. And then we choose this box I sell this product or service to my customers again this is a service and we do not purchase this from customers we only sell this we do not purchase this from suppliers we only sell this to customers okay so this is the box that we have to check not this one okay so next is we will assign a general ledger account and we will choose uh, 1661 dine in customers then we hit save and close and then we create another one let's click on new again let's click on services and let's name this takeout services then we assign a GL account it's this one 1662 then we hit save and close Okay, we're done with our service item. Let's move to the next step. Okay, let's set up our sales taxes. On the left navigation pane, let's click on taxes. And then let's click on setup tax. Okay, first is our tax name. Let's put sales tax in here then let's say a tax on sale of products and services okay so for our tax agency let's put uh, internal revenue services uh, business ID then start of our current tax period let's say January uh, filing frequency will be quarterly reporting method would be cash basis because we don't want to pay IRS an amount of tax that is not yet collected then our sales tax rate is since our address is in Baltimore uh, the tax rate for sales taxes is 6% this tax is collected on purchases um, no let's just leave that uh, blank then we'll hit next okay so we're done with setting up our sales taxes let's check if it's already activated let's click on new and click on sales receipt okay so now it's already uh, activated okay now we're done with setting up our tax let's move to the next and final step okay so let's go to reports 
And then we have three tabs for standard reports, custom reports, and management reports. So in our standard reports, we already have receivable aging summary, balance sheet, and profit and loss. So the only report that I really want to make is the one that I've mentioned earlier, which will be used uh, for the valuation of our ending inventories. So it should look a little something like this. On the first column, our first column would be uh, the products and services, which in this case, the non-inventory items that we imported. Uh, the second column would be the unit of measure and the unit, the number of units purchased. <clears throat> but in this case, we will only be using the description column because we still don't have uh, the unit of measure feature in QuickBooks Online. Then followed by uh, the last column, which is amount. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to do that, I want you guys to uh, go to this search bar and type transaction details so it's this one okay <clears throat> then we're going to customize it let's click on this customize button and then let's go to this rows and columns and then it says group by i'm gonna group this by products and services okay so let's go to the drop down menu and find products and services okay next is our column headers so let's click on this one change columns and then we will include date transaction type transaction number uh, description and amount looks good let's hide this one and then take note that this is grouped by products and services but we don't want to include service items in this report we only need the products so we will work on our filters so let's click on filter then let's find products and services and then let's click on this drop down menu and let's include all non-inventory items the only thing that we will exclude in this list are the service item and we only have two service items by the way it's this one dine-in services and take-out services it's this one okay next let's close this one and go to our header and footer so company name let's change this to uh, cost tracking report then port period date prepared time prepared okay looks good we will now run the report <clears throat> okay so to check if the report works properly we're gonna create a transaction that involves a non-inventory item but before that we are going to open the books first because if you remember we have closed the books on the second part of this video okay so let's go back to account and settings let's click on the gear icon and then let's click on account and settings then on the advanced tab the first field let's switch this off and hit save <clears throat> then let's close account and settings then before we forget, let's click on save customization and let's click on save. Okay, so let's go to expenses. And then in the expenses tab, let's click on add expense manually. <clears throat> so if you noticed, we have category details and item details. So this is what you use if uh, you want to charge purchases directly to GL account, this one. But in this case, uh, we will be charging purchases directly to products, okay? So we will work with item details. So let's hide this one. Now let's create a transaction. Let's say we purchased a balsamic vinegar, uh, purchased beef, purchased banana and then we purchased <coughs> uh, let's say chicken uh, 
one bottle <coughs> at let's say five dollars so we put five dollars in here then for beef one pound let's say two pounds at ten dollars per pound <clears throat> let's say 20 then banana uh, one pound one bundle at uh, 30 cents ah, let's just say one dollar <clears throat> one then chicken five pounds at uh, five dollars a pound so it's gonna be 25 dollars okay so let's hit save and close then let's go back to our reports let's go to custom reports and let's click on the cost tracking report that we just made all right okay we're almost done but we still need to do two things first is create an undeposited funds account all sales proceeds paid by customers in cash and stays in the restaurant for a while before getting deposited will be debited to undeposited funds account okay next is our sales tax payable account so quickbooks is using a default sales tax payable account it cannot be deactivated and if you remember we have included a sales tax payable account in our import file so what we will do is uh, we will deactivate our imported sales tax payable account and we will use the default one so let's go to accounting then let's go to our chart of accounts let's click on new and then for the account type, let's choose cash and cash equivalents. And the detail type for the undeposited fund will be cash on hand. Okay, so let's name this undeposited funds. The number would be 1000. Okay, then let's hit save and close. Next is sales tax payable. So first, let's find our imported sales tax payable. It's this one. Now we are going to deactivate this, but we will use this exact uh, account code on the default one. Okay, so it's 1465. Let's click this arrow and make inactive. So 1465. Now let's go to the default sales tax payable account. So every time we create a transaction that involves a sales tax, uh, the entry on the sales tax immediately is posted to this account sales tax payable okay so we will edit this we can edit then 1465 okay. then hit save and close now we're done with the whole setup let's do a test run Okay, so this is the part where all of the things that we've talked about from the beginning would finally make sense. So we will be creating purchase transactions and then sales transactions, and then we will be checking our balance sheet and profit and loss statements, and then we will simulate a physical count in order to make a month-end adjustment to cost of sales. Okay, so let's create our expense transactions. Let's click on new. And if you're purchasing uh, from suppliers on account, you go to bill. If you are purchasing on a cash basis, uh, you go to expense. For this example, it's cash basis. Okay, so we will make two batches of transactions from different dates. Uh, the, this one is from August 8, 2020, and the next one is uh, August 9, 2020. So, this will be a direct charge to our Chase account and then it's a direct debit 
and this is the reference number then we will be purchasing beef chicken oxtail and pork okay so uh, let's change this to save and new so that we can create another one next is on august 9 uh, same items but different prices so uh, same details and the reference number would be xp0002 and then let's hit save and close okay next let's create our sales transactions so again let's click on new if you are selling to customers on credit you go to invoice if you are selling to customers on cash basis you go to sales receipt so for this example it's cash basis Okay, so for our customer, uh, let's choose public. Then the transaction date would be August 9. Uh, let's assume that this is a cash transaction. So let's deposit this to undeposited funds. Then let's choose the services, dine-in, and takeout. So let's assume that these amounts are from our sales reports. So for dine-in services, let's go with 1200 takeout services would be $800 so let's make this amounts um, tax inclusive which means they already include the sales taxes if prices are tax exclusive uh, customers would be paying this amount plus the sales tax so let's set the sales taxes to 6% and hit save and close okay so now let's go to reports and we will be checking our balance sheet and profit and loss statements so let's check on our balance sheet so as you can see we have a negative balance on our chase account uh, this is because this account does not have a beginning balance and we immediately use it for disbursement purposes but that's okay let's go to our uh, profit and loss statement let's click on profit and loss Okay, so this is our profit and loss statement. Our total sales is $1,800. Our cost of sales is $915. But this pertains to all of the items that we purchased, including those that are still available in the store. Ending inventories should not form part of cost of sales. That is why we will be adjusting this at the end of the month. Okay, so our net profit is 971.8. Now let's go to our custom reports. This report shows you all of the items that we purchased, including the corresponding prices. And the reason why we entered this in two different dates with different prices is because we are going to allocate the prices on our ending inventories. Okay, so let's extract this into an Excel file. All you have to do is click on this button right here. Now let's assume that this is the end of the month and we already conducted our physical counts and this is what we found out so in the store we still have 12 pounds of beef 14 pounds of chicken 15 pounds of oxtail and 25 pounds of pork now the question is how do we evaluate these items when there are two different purchase prices the answer is since uh, we are using the first in first out method and we are dealing with ending inventories we will allocate costs from the bottom up so let me show you an example the price of beef on August 8th is $10 per pound. The price on August 9th is $17 per pound. So the latest price is $17 per pound and that's 10 pounds. So what we will do is <clears throat> we will value the first 10 pound, which is this one, at $17. And the remaining two would be valued at uh, $10 a pound. Just this one so from the bottom up okay this would be $170 and this one is 20 so the ending inventory balance the cost of ending inventory for beef uh, is $190 now let's apply the same concept to the remaining ending inventories so the cost of ending inventory for chicken is $89. The cost of ending inventory for oxtail is $115 and $185 for pork. 
for a total of $579. This amount will be our total adjustment to cost of sales. So the entry will be <coughs> invent debit inventory uh, ingredients and then credit cost of sales ingredients. We will post this as a general journal entry. So 579 and 579. Okay, so let's go back to QuickBooks. Let's click on new and choose journal entry. Okay, so let's click on this box and choose our inventory account, which is inventory ingredients. And then for our credit account, that would be cost of sales ingredients then let's put the amount 579 579 okay then let's hit save and close please don't forget to reverse that entry the next month now let's check on our profit and loss again let's go to reports and standard reports and then profit and loss so as you can see the the value of cost of sales changed from 915 to 336 so this is now the correct balance of cost of sales we already removed uh, the portion that is still unused okay so our our correct net profit amount is 1550.8 Okay, so the only thing left to do now is to connect your QuickBooks with your bank account so that you will be able to download uh, bank feeds easily for bank reconciliation purposes. So just a short disclaimer, your QuickBooks online setup will always depend on your business needs. So this was just based on the most common setups uh, restaurants normally use. So if your business would require a different setup, you can always modify this. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you need more help setting up your QuickBooks, you can get my contact information on the next clip. Again, I'm Andrew Molo, CPA and QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and I'll see you guys next time.